So here are the exercises for chapter 9. There's two of them. The first one is I actually want you to write a reusable function called usage. When I say reusable, I mean this function should be able to be used with any shell script regardless of the actual parameters that that script takes. So the function should take at least one parameter, which is the name of the script. I guess you could get that from $0. And it should do the following. It should echo that script's name plus any other given parameters that you specify out to standard error. It should actually beep, make a little bing noise using the control G character. I don't know if you remember how to do that, but it's pretty much just putting a control G into the echo statement. Uh, it should also echo with an exit status of 2 and we should ensure that base name is used to trim out the path information from the script name. And this is how you might call this particular usage function. It's a function recall, not a script. You might say usage and then $0 which would be obviously the script name complete with path information if there was any specified and then the parameters that the script should have, which would be a username and a file name and then the dot 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 to signify that there might be actually more than one file name required. So the usage function will actually take, in this particular example, exactly four parameters. The dollar zero, username, file name and then dot 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 will be the fourth parameter. Like I said, it doesn't have to take four parameters because the usage will be different for each script that it's actually used in. Now what you could do then is you could add, add this usage function that you've written, this generic reusable function, to a function library and you could call it from anywhere, from any script that you write. So you'd never have to write a usage function ever again. So that's the first exercise. And the second exercise is relating to the course project. Modify it so that it actually requires one command line parameter which will be the name of the data file. Now this command line parameter will be not optional. They have to specify it on the command line of our script. Now obviously we need to modify the script in a few ways. I'd like you to use this, this new usage function that you just wrote in the last exercise to display the usage message if the user does not specify the file name parameter. And I don't mind whether you copy and paste the code from the usage function into your course project or whether you use the dot operator to include your function library that contains the usage function. Now if they specify if they specify a file and the file exists you must check that you can write to the file. If you can't write to the file then obviously the database isn't going to be able to do its job so we exit the program with the appropriate error message. If they specify a file and the file does not exist, exist ask them if they want to create the file and if they say no, well there's nothing we can do really because they don't want to create a file so we must exit. Now if they say that we can create the file then create it of course and then check that you are able to create it because obviously whatever you did to create the file may have failed and if it failed obviously you'd have to exit at that point. So the only way that we'd actually make it through to the rest of the bulk of the program is either if the file exists and it's writable or the file does not exist and we were successfully able to create it. Okay, so there's a little bit of work for you to do there. It's all good practice. At this sort of these sort of techniques are very common. So good luck and I'll see you in the next module where I'll show you my answers.